going through your timeline, you discover that you have a lot of your posts, a lot of them does not put the present government in a positive light. Why? Well, that's uh, a very easy question. Okay. And um, it is so because there are not a lot of positive things to say about the present government. That's uh, not just my view, a lot of Nigerians hold the view and um, there are indices in virtually all sectors of the economy to substantiate that view. And so what we're doing is basically saying what everybody is saying. You know, that's why um, it looks as though we're opposing the government but we're not, we're just um, being the, frank. The, the fee are not opposing the government because a lot of um, persons, they feel that Yes, we know things are not working out well at the moment, but for PDP, for anybody in PDP to be criticizing this government, it's funny because they have the opportunity for 16 years to change the narrative as far as Nigerians concerned. They never do that. Well, I won't, I won't agree. Mm -hmm. I won't agree with that because um, criticizing a government is a responsibility of everybody, okay. every citizen, mm -hmm. whether you're a politician or not. You know, it's every citizen has um, the rights, every citizen has the imprimatur from the constitution mm -hmm. to put his government on its toes. There are objectives of government, you know, that government must fulfill, and if they don't fulfill it, you have the right to speak up. So, apart from the fact that some of us are political, but uh, what we're doing is basically what everybody should do. And so, social media has given us that platform to speak up to a large number of people and to. Um, air our voice, you know, and air our views. Criticize government. It's good to criticize government. Okay. Government all over the world should be criticized, and uh, I enjoy doing it. Okay. Yes, I do with so much pleasure, okay. and I enjoy the attack I get from it. Okay. I think it's good, okay. and um, that's what it is. Now, what about a situation when you see, uh, the government come up with a policy that you feel you are okay with? What do you think is ideal for you? to come to that same platform and also praise them and this is what you've done and in support of this thing and like this is what I did and did at this point in time. Mm, see, Must it be attack, attack all the time? Well, um, I won't agree that it's all attack. Okay. You know, I may not, I'm not a journalist. Okay. I'm not a social critic. Okay. You know, a journalist or a social critic is the one who wants to be balanced. So, okay, they've done this wrongly and they've done this rightly. Okay. I'm political. Okay. Yeah, so it is abnormal for a politician to be balanced. It's abnormal, all over the world. Okay. Politicians cannot be balanced. So people have to understand that I'm not a journalist, so don't expect me to be fair. I okay. cannot just be fair. My, my view is to um, get or point out the loopholes in every policy. Okay. If it's good, yeah, it's good for me too, good for the people, but... And you won't have to, you don't mention it? Uh, I'll, I'll allow you mention it, since you're a supporter, not you now. Okay. I will allow the supporters of the government okay. or those who work for the government to mention it. Okay. And um, I pick holes in what they mentioned. Yes, and uh, create some controversy. That's how it should be. Okay, so that's your main aim, just to create controversy. So at the end of the day, you can try and create a perception in the mind of the voters that this government, they are not performing. No, not really. That's not the idea. Okay. Nigeria today is not at ease. Whether you are an APC supporter or a PDP supporter, that's a fact. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not trying to tell you what's obvious. Every Nigerian knows what's going on. So, I'm only expressing my thoughts. Mm -hmm. If you, you buy it, fine. If you don't, you can argue. You can, you can argue. You see, politics is a contestation of ideas, a contestation of, of policies, of plans, of different political elements. You don't have to agree with me. I don't have to agree with you, but let us talk about it. Let us argue it. It ought to be um, a platform for the deployment of power for the benefit of the people. You know, so you just said just now that PDP was there 16 years mm -hmm. and they don't have the right to criticize. That's not true. You know, everybody has the right to criticize. And that the APC has been there just two years is not enough to say, okay, give them time. No, from the day they take over power, the next day we start criticizing. You know, because unfortunately, unfortunately and regrettably so, they made promises that were unreasonable if you ask me. No, there, there, was, there was no timeline to these promises. No, no there, there are no timelines to yeah. promises because you have a four-year period. So there's a possibility yeah. that they will still be able to fulfill what? No, no it depends on the, the latitude you're willing to give them. I may not be willing to give them that much time. Okay. You know, as a politician, 
I may not be like you who is just playing and okay, let us allow them. These other guys have six steam, they're having just to know. They promise to build bridges so where there were no rivers. Okay. They promise to, you know, put a roof over Nigeria so that we cannot feel the sun. But that's why they won the men. election. No, that's not why they won the election. So why do you think they won the election? Elections are won, you know, on the on the basis of many factors. Okay. I quite agree, very frankly, that um, it is okay to have changes every now and then. It is not proper for one political party to rule for 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. That doesn't give the politics or the democracy life. Mm -hmm. It is good when there's a change. That's how it operates in advanced democracy. So okay. I felt it was just a time for the PDP to step aside mm -hmm. and let us see what, you know. I don't think offer. it's too early. For we to change to another party now. No, if I, I wish we could change immediately. Immediately. Yeah, because because mm -hmm. apart from the fact that I'm political, the average Nigerian is befuddled. The average Nigerian is has lost hope. Those are those are commune with, and we see it every day on TV. Even those who are supporters of the president, I live in the north, mm -hmm. are not as pleased any longer as they were. Even if we try to pretend. We know what's going on. So if they could make a change to the PDP in two, in two, in two weeks even, if it were possible, actually they would have. If we go for an election today, come on, there's no game saying that the APC will not get as much support even in the North as it got in 2015. That's a fact. And you feel if the election is done today, PDP can get into power? It was unfortunate that we made a little mistakes here and there. If not, won't have lost the election okay. because the alternative was was not really an alternative. You know, they promised to change their lives, but really they changed. But is there a party called PDP in this country as it stands? Is there a party called PDP, PDP as it stands? PDP still remains okay. the largest political party in Africa. Okay. PDP still remains the most talked about political party in Africa. Okay. PDP still remains the only party in Nigeria okay. that has. Uh, a domicile in every local government council in the country. Okay. So if anybody wants to ask, it's just being uh, jocular if PDP still exists because uh, the foundation we are building on today, if they are building, was made by the PDP. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, I want to ask a question, a very funny one at that. This word restructuring is almost becoming a cliche. Everybody's talking about even our past leaders. I want to ask a question. The PDP, they seem to be more in support of the word restructure, restructure, restructure. But you guys have the opportunity to restructure Nigeria for 16 years. Nothing was done. How come now that we have another party in power, if now that PDP wants Nigeria to be restructured? Okay, I mean, <clears throat> first of all, it is not a PDP thing. And um, I would like to look at it from pre-independence. You know, in the, in the late 50s and early 60s, we had African nations, you know, we want to restructure the, the system of government from the colonial master, they wanted self-rule, you know, and we saw young people across Africa, we saw uh, Dr. Nandi Azikiwe, we saw Chief Ababa from the World of War, we saw uh, Anthony Nahuru, we saw Saramadu Belo in Ghana, we saw uh, the Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, you know, in Togo, you know, we saw Silvanos Olympio, in Mali, we saw Modibo Keita, you know, in Ethiopia, we saw Haile Selassie. In Zambia, we saw uh, Kenneth Kaunda. You know, in uh, in Kenya, we saw Jomo Kenyatta. You know, in Angola, we saw uh, William Sobote. In Tanzania, we saw uh, uh, Malimu Julius Kambaragi Nyerere. We saw great young people who wanted to restructure their countries, and it's okay to restructure every now and then. It's been almost it's over over 50 years. So the the current makeup of Nigeria. Doesn't appear to be working. It happened in Kenya. After the 2007 elections, when there was uh, an uprising in Kenya, a lot of people were killed. There was a restructuring of the system in Kenya. They changed the constitution. Now, I think that is how it should be every now and then. So it is not just a PDP thing. I think Nigeria is due for restructuring. And I hold the view, and very strongly too, that it's not just about the cry for restructuring. There's a deeper cry for leadership that Nigeria and Africa lacks at the moment, and that's a tragedy. You know, Africa has not gotten the leadership she deserves from the beginning, and that's what the people want. You know, so those who are agitating for Biafra, 
they may not have been if there was proper leadership. You know, they may not have been that angry if they had a leader who they felt was the leader of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You know, sadly, and the tragedy as well is that many people don't feel that the uh, leadership of Nigeria today, you know, bothers about Nigeria as a country. Mm -hmm. You know, we feel, and many people feel the same way that uh, it's more of a sectional leadership, and it's it's, it's crystal clear. It's uh, visible to the blind and audible to the deaf. When you have a president who, you know, talks more about uh, uh, or, uh, let me say, makes comments that are not just inflammatory, comments that make you feel uh, dejected and rejected, comments that make you feel they're not a part of the whole. It's, it's enough for you to agitate. Yeah. You know, a president, I expected that when President Buhari won the elections, he would make comments you know, to unify the people, to unify Nigerians. You cannot win an election in a country as diverse as Nigeria. You're making public comments, you're making speeches, and it appears as though you are, you are one-sided. You appear to favor those who gave you more votes and others. That is unreasonable. Nobody does that. And so that is the reason why the call for uh, secession is, is more uh, obvious today. It has always been there. You know, the call for restructuring is more obvious today. It has always been there. So it is not a PDP thing. In fact, even in the APC, there are people who are calling for restructuring because it is about us, not about them. Those guys who are really now, they don't really care about Nigeria because they belong to the old stuff. They have no stake in the future. So it is our call. Should we restructure? Yes. Why should we restructure? We need to have a Nigeria. This is not, Nigeria is not a country at the moment. We are a geographical location. That's what it has been since the 1960s. Above my followers said it. You know, it is a, That's a punchline. Yeah, it it a, a, a mere geographical expression. Okay. I'm not the one saying it. Okay. These are what uh, the founding fathers said, even at the time. So that suggests to anyone that even at that time, we were not uh, unified. We were just uh, a contraption or contraception of the British. You know, the, 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 the first people to be together, we had no common ideology, no common focus, no common dream. You know, we, we put together, amalgamated, and forced to live together. But uh, I'm not asking for uh, a break okay. of the country. Mm -hmm. no. it doesn't, I think we can. Um, you, are, you, are, you are among the school of thought that say that our unity is sacrosanct. Yes, it is. But it's, it's, but, now. But it's negotiable. The president said the unity of Nigeria is not negotiable. Mm -hmm. That is not a democratic statement. The unity of every nation is negotiable. Mm -hmm. And what do we mean? We're not, we're, we're not saying that uh, um, we don't want to be unified. We're saying that can we renegotiate our terms of unity? Can we rearrange the constitution? Can it favor everybody? Because presently it doesn't. It doesn't. The British obviously gave a larger chunk of Nigeria to a part of the country. Mm -hmm. and. They were not. They didn't have the highest number in population for any reason. So they were favored and given 73 percent of the country. It is. It is okay for you who you know. There's the other chunk. You say no, no. This was not right from the beginning. Can we talk about it? Can we? Can we re-engineer the constitution? That's what we're talking about. And I think it's fine. Now let me ask you because let me say um, bring to note one issue. Now, the president, um, the executive, they are actually saying that the reason why they seem not to be doing well is because the legislators, they are not working in tandem with the executive, even though they are of the same political party. Yeah. The judiciary is not the right one about. Now, the question is this. Your dad was a former legislator. Now, compare when your dad was there and now. What is your view about the present crop of legislators that we have in this country? Well, I think the... Um, the bottom line is the, the beauty of democracy that provides separation of powers. Okay. It is not normal or it is not beneficial to the majority of the people if the legislators are always on the side of the executives. That's not how it should be. Mm -hmm. Because some are to execute laws that are made, some are to make laws, you know. And so it's okay if there's a friction every now and then. Even when it's coming from people of the same political party. It doesn't matter. It's not about it's not about the APC, it's about Nigeria. Then I want to ask a question. Then do we have what we call political parties ideologies in this country? Because I want to believe that the 
the manifesto that took those men to that house and the one that brought the president to power, it should be the same. Mm. So from time to time, we will expect that their policies, they should, have, they should all agree with their policies. Yes. So what is now the issue? Well, the, the APC is having a fundamental issue okay. from its foundation. Mm -hmm. They were never really a political party. Mm -hmm. You know, they restrained folks who just came together, you know, conjured doctrines, you know, used pro uh, deployed propaganda, you know, to get Jonathan out of the office. So they got in there and they find that, you know, there's a complete mess. And it's, it's a foundational thing. It's not just, you know, executive and, and, and So this friction, is it not enough for us to excuse the executive in some things like that? No. There should be friction. It is it is beneficial to democracy that there's friction. Okay. It doesn't make any sense that whatever bill the executive initiates is passed in the legislature. No, the legislature is a larger representation of the people. Mm -hmm. So if you're, you're the, the, the president feels that he he, he wants uh, more powers to himself, and the Nigerians feel that you have enough powers already, deploy the ones you have for the benefit of the people. You're not doing that. You want more powers. So are you saying that this crop of legislators, they are working for the good of the ordinary nation? What are they doing? Check what they are doing in line with their rules, in line with the constitution. Okay. What does the law say? Are they to oversight the, for the function of the executive? Yes. Mm -hmm. Are they doing it? You may not like how they are doing it, but is it constitutional? Mm -hmm. yeah, though the president may not like what's going on, but it doesn't matter whether he likes it or not. Are they, are they doing it according to the terms and conditions of the law and why they were elected? Many will agree that they are doing so, and so I don't find... Look, for example, the president was bent on making um, um, Magu you know, some sort of chairman. Okay. And there were allegations. Like, I like the word you use, allegations. Well, yes, there were allegations okay. labeled against him. Okay. You know, you know, until the court pronounces you guilty, whatever anybody says allegations. So why shouldn't he be confirmed? Because the court have not pronounced him guilty. No, nobody went to court. You see, the name of the acting chairman was sent to the National Assembly okay. for confirmation. Okay. The president appoints subject to the confirmation of the Senate. Okay. If the Senate doesn't confirm, he can't be appointed. That is spelled out in the Constitution. Okay. So he has a right to still operate as an active. Well, he does, but, <laughs> but that is the reason why we're seeing this unnecessary friction here and there, because there's now a, a contestation of power. So why, how come the legislature, uh, they feel this man, the allegation against him is valid? They should take him to court. No, no, it may not be in, in their role to take him to court. But one of them no, no, no. The reason why he came was to be to be confirmed, okay. you know, not to be tried. Okay. You know, so anybody can take him to court. Don't you think the reason why Mago have not been confirmed is because of the fact that a lot of these um, legislators they see this guy as a thorn? It may be true. Place. It may be true. That is an assumption. Mm -hmm. But the allegations are not assumptions. The allegations are not assumptions. Okay. Should, they, should the allegations be investigated? Yes. Okay. Should we just appoint him and assume it doesn't matter because the president wants it so? No. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're telling us that you're fighting corruption, but you, are, you want to be seen to be appearing to fight corruption. But that's not what you're doing. A wise man cleans his house first. I have a four-year-old. If maybe he goes to play with his cousins in the mud one day, and you get home and you find them in the mud, who will you scold first? Your son. You get him out of the mud and beat him. Then his cousins can see that beating is coming from me. I'm not going to be safe from him because he has hit his son first. But if I didn't do that, I took them all out of the mud, my son goes home to eat in doing and I'm punishing the rest. That is not fair. That appears to be what we're seeing today. He has done the, that with the SSG. The SGF? What, what, the SGF what, 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 what has he done? Okay. What has he done? Yes, the well, he came, no, he came back a few weeks ago, and mm -hmm. there was a report, a committee report. He's looking through the report. Looking through the report yes. for four weeks. It what are, it what, are, what it, are we it, talking listen, about? There is no listen, the what are we talking about? There is no, there's no place in the constitution mm -hmm. where he's allowed. There, there is a timeline for him to. That's what I'm saying. That you are you are giving you a wrong little, impression. You speak a little. You are giving the people a wrong impression that you are accommodating the allegations. Mm -hmm. That's not how it should be. If people are going to be bubbled at home, you go to their houses, you break their doors, you know, infringing on their rights. You know, you put them in ESC uh, 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 custody for weeks, for hours and days and months, you know, because of allegations. And your aid is being alleged to have committed a fraud. And you treat him differently. You are telling everybody that you are not fair. And that is why it doesn't appear 
that there is a fight against corruption. That is why there are no cases, there are no convictions. No convictions because a lot of allegations are, are watery. You know, the SEC cannot substantiate them before the judges. And you find out uh, there are adjournments, there are cancellations, there are this. We want to be seen, oh, Vanguard, the Israeli has returned $90 billion. And the government is trying to fight her corruption on the pages of a newspaper. I, I, I feel very strongly, too, that all those who um, embezzled monies should, should face the law. Okay. That's how I feel. It doesn't matter what party you belong to. Mm -hmm. But let it be done the way it should be done. Let it be done according to the law. Mm -hmm. you know, it is not okay to put my name on TV, you know, on, on radio, on the paper that you know, I stole this and that, Allegedly, and, and, and creates an impression that, oh, this guy's a thief. I'm not a thief until the court has declared me so. Okay. You know, so Nigerians will appreciate if there is more sanity in the fight against corruption, if there is more wholeness, you know, if the president and the presidency, now we don't know which is which because uh, we have seen cases where the former SGF mm -hmm. was asking, you know, who is the presidency? You know, we have seen cases where uh, aides of the president flout others of the vice president. And we are wondering if this is like a cartoon or these are just um, a, 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 a conglomerate of jokers who are just trying to uh, 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 propel and appropriate powers for themselves. It wasn't looking as though there was a government or the way the president was out. The vice president couldn't make some decisions. He couldn't do some, even as an, in an acting capacity. And that just tells you that there was no plan for governance. There was a plan to you know, take over power. But there was no plan to deploy the power to the benefit of the people. What has been achieved in the past two years? That's what I'm saying. The appearance to be fighting corruption. You see, it is ludicrous, completely asinine for a man to um, improvise your people. I'm not saying that's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving an instance. Okay. Improv to improvise your people and ask them not to steal. If I have to steal to feed my children, I will steal and go to jail. Now, listen, I want to ask a question. Are you telling us that this um, allegation of corruption that is being um, attached to your former administration of uh, President Gulo Jonathan and his business? No, I'm not saying so. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that if there are, if there are allegations, substantiate it. Okay. If they can be substantiated, take them to court. No, if, if they are, they are, there's a proof that Jonathan misappropriate, misappropriate I'm not using the word Jonathan now. Okay, if, no, you know, if there's a proof, or if there are proofs that members of of Jonathan's government, you know, misappropriated funds, all forms of uh, fiscal. Have you forgotten Dasuki Gates? Where's Dasuki? You saw the spree. Where's Dasuki? Okay. Where's he? He's incarcerated for okay. no reason. For no reason. That doesn't make any sense. But we, have, we had a lot of confessions. Those though. are yeah, they, they remain allegations. Okay. Anybody can say you can you can you can accuse me tomorrow of raping a minor, even if you've not seen me before, and anybody can believe you. But those are men. Flimsy, watery, and lazy allegations. So what is expected because of Because it's not proven by the courts. That is what we're saying. Okay. Let Dasuki be taken to court. I know he's been taken to court. Mm -hmm. If they had strong enough evidence, Dasuki would be in But what about the monies that have been returned? Uh, yes, it's okay. Because there's, is, there, is there any way you can you return money that you didn't steal? We are being told that monies have been returned. Okay. It remains hearsay. That is what it is. No matter how you feel about it. You know, the EFCC, there was this stunt they were doing some time ago, you know, they get a lot of money, and I, I celebrate it. I don't see any reason why anybody would, would start money in his house. And it is okay to confiscate such money, okay. but it shouldn't end there. Someone cannot keep $9 million in some squalor in the Cardona, and all we heard was that you took the money from him. You should go to jail. Okay. So, if so now that, that means you agree with me that it was a looting spree. Under the former administration, there's, there's always a looting spree in every government. But it was worst then. No, that's, just, that's, that's your opinion. Not, not my opinion. No, no, it's an opinion, okay. basically. Okay. Because had this government not come, nobody would have known what happened okay. in the previous government. So, we have to wait. so until this government ends, okay. and we have another who's ready to you know, put hands you know, in their butt, before mm -hmm. we know what happened. So it won't be right to completely agree with you that there was a looting spree. Now, all of us, um, you see, we are a PR firm, yeah. so we are looking at social media from the angle of public relations. Now, I'm bringing it down to those things. Uh, you are very active on social media. 
And there's an issue that we want to we'll be bringing, we've we'll been asking of where every influencer that comes in, that we have a lot of those um, in diaspora. They are not on ground to see what's going on. But from time to time, we see them release videos, especially with live streaming, we see them release videos telling us what's going on in Benin, how things are not working out well. And we feel it's not good for the country. So what's the take about this? Well, um, there are two schools of thought. Okay. You, know, you have said you feel it's not good. Mm -hmm. Some will say they feel it is good because you are saying, you are expressing yourself you. based on the information you have. You know, so whichever is good, but but then it is, a, is, a, is a, it is a role of the government to propel good information about the city. It doesn't make any sense for us not to take advantage of technology. Why don't we have jingles sponsored by the state government on social media? Mm -hmm. If we are bothered about the image that some of our friends in diaspora give, then counter it. If they are lying, prove it. So you, you cannot keep quiet, except what they are saying is true, and allow them to spread information you feel is not right, except it is true, which I feel to a very large extent it is, because... You feel it's true? Believe me. Because they are not on grounds. No, they, they are, no, you don't have so to how do be... get the information? No, no, I don't have to be in the name okay. to know what's going on in the name. Okay. That is why social media has come, and it gives everybody real-time information. Okay. People can take a video of what's going on right now in the name, mm -hmm. and someone in Australia is watching. And can be doctors? Who's going to be uh, well, no, it depends. They, they, they are live, this live video mm. cannot be doctor. Okay. Uh, people are watching it in real time. Okay. So whatever I say... But are you aware that you can um, take a video, yeah. do a video, then you stream it and look at it as live? Of course. <laughs> so but but, but, but <laughs> in, in a case where you are having a live video... No, you, can actually, time, you can actually do a video, prepare, okay, prepare the video, then stream it as if it's happening live. As if. That, that's not life okay. any longer. I would be letting you go anywhere from now. I want to put into your notice an issue that we have in the media space going on between you and, okay, I, I'm bringing you into the picture because of your posts on the issue between the Sosa, Ewere, and um, Senator Matthew Kogini about a potted job um, um, advert that was placed on his um, official page. I want to ask you this. Up till now, no official, um, which one am I going to use? Official statement from Senator Matthew Rogide concerning that. To either that tell people that please, I'm sorry, and uh, maybe I posted that in horribly, or no, no official, he, he has remained silent. No, you're wrong. Okay. You're wrong because there's been an official proclamation by his SLA, uh, his SLA. by his. Neda okay. on this issue, okay. and that, and that is what has quelled the you know needless noise that was there. Is there, is there a need for is there a need for our legislators to be having town hall meetings? This, no, no, that's the wrong question. Legislators have no choice than to have town hall meetings. Than to have town hall meetings. It's, okay. It is normal. You must engage the people. Mm -hmm. So I find it unreasonable if you are, if you are grant me such latitude mm -hmm. to say that legislators who do not engage the people. At least every quarter. Okay. Don't understand what the functions are. Okay, cool. You know? So you, you don't, don't you think an issue like this should be addressed? The, the senator should call for a town hall meeting. No, no, no. On this issue, it is too watery. Too watery. Yes, it was too watery for him to call for such a meeting. I feel the issue has died down. It has because uh, uh, after, 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 I shared, I after I shared my thoughts okay. on it a few days ago, mm -hmm. uh, the SLA to the senator responded and he made it so clear and explained it. Well, well, we just got a, we got a post today on yeah. that issue too. That what? Concerning this issue from that, the same person. And no, it's, it's fine. Okay. You see, I understand what the game is, you know, because some of us, mostly during the elections last year, you know, we played soft cards, you know, because of your political interests, you, make, you try to make some things issues that are really not issues. You know, just to be seen that you are talking. And mostly some who are paid to do it, you have to show to who paid you that, yes, I'm doing what you paid me to do. Even if it doesn't make any sense, but let it be that I'm writing something. Because uh, it obviously makes no sense there. Uh. Okay, now, you have made mention of young, 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 yeah. young. Now, there's this hashtag, not too young to rule. Are you supposed to know that? That the, oh, yes. that the youth should? No, I am more than a support of it because... Are you sure the youth, they are ready to rule in yes. this country? Yes, they are. I made, I made mention of 
you know, young guys in, in the late 50s and 60s in different countries who were younger than a lot of us, you know, who may not have had the capacity at the time, but tried. And they were able to liberate their nations from the clause of the colonial masters. I think we have such young people today who have the capacity, who have the education, who have the experience and enlightenment to, to take up leadership positions. And so it is, it is, it is fair to us and our children that now there's this clamor for young people getting into public office. I think that's how it should be. My father is almost 70. I tell him all the time, it doesn't make any sense anymore for people like you to be jostling for political position because your days are just a number. You don't belong to the future of Nigeria. That is the truth. And that is why he had to, to self-pedal and step aside because I, whenever I see him, I tell him, People about your age group should fade away. Should fade away. We're not, we're not saying you should resign from politics or, you know, you can still be there by the background, but you should not, we should not have uh, political meetings. I was saying people in their 70s and 80s sit at the front, you know, want to. No, that time has passed. That is why young people, 20, 24, 25, 31, we should be the ones uh, uh, taking over this space. And that is why. Such a, a conversation is necessary. We must educate you know, people like us. We must, we must uh, uh, upgrade their reasoning. You are not too young to do it. Even It doesn't matter if you fail. It is okay to fail. Because those who are doing it, who are older, are still failing. Okay. So it is okay for you to fail. Fail and you do it better the next time. So I think it's time for a generational shift. But the tragedy is that um, most young Africans, have been denied the economic power, you know, and the financial leverage mm -hmm. to run for political office. Mm -hmm. So that is um, in itself a hindrance, you know, because where you, where you have to buy a farm for one million naira or ten million naira, come on, how many young people would work so hard to raise one million mm -hmm. and give to political party for a farm? You know, nobody would do that. So, so that's. I think that there's been a deliberate denial, mm -hmm. deliberate denial of young people from being self-sufficient, from being self-reliant. That's why you have ideas for, for entrepreneurship. The banks are not willing to support you. Governors are giving you know, pittance you know, for, for big ideas. Mm -hmm. you know, because there's a fear that if you make these guys financially stalwart, they're going to take over faster. So they want to keep them out of jobs. So young people have no jobs. You know, they are not self-sufficient, so they cannot speak up. That is why those who are able to speak up should speak louder for those who can't, because we must keep putting them on their toes. We must keep fighting with them. It's going to be a fight. Mm -hmm. Nobody easily re relinquishes power. Mm -hmm. So we must let them know that there's a change. We're coming in. If we don't stand up, they won't sit down. Uh, you started by telling us that you are a politician. Any plan of contesting and which position do you want to contest? Am I a politician? You just said so. I said I'm political. Okay, political. You're not yeah. a politician. No, there's, there's, uh, okay. there, there may not be so much of a difference. Okay. Now, I, I'm a professional. I'm an engineer. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I run businesses as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm not um, altogether in, in, in holistically now a politician. I will call myself um, a professional in politics. Yes, and um, I think uh, that's a better term because when you say politician, everybody feels like, oh, that's his source of income. That's all he does for a living, okay. which is not, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. So a professional in politics. In politics. You know, and I think more young professionals mm -hmm. should get involved in politics because we cannot change uh, the state or change Nigeria or change Africa. So do you have any plan of buying for any political position? Yes, I, I attempted in 2015. Okay. I attempted to run for House of Representatives in 2015. So you in Abuja? Uh, where I work in Abuja. Okay. Yes, I'm always in Benin you know, okay. all the time. So, and I'm in touch with the people yeah. of my of my constituency. Yeah. Uh, I go for my uh, my ward meetings every now and then, and I'm very involved in the in the political arrangement of the party you know, at the state level and at the national level. You know, so I, I tried. I made that attempt in 2015. And 2019 is uh, a, a beautiful time for us to try again. You're going to leave us with an advice to our young um, politicians, our young um, uh, youths, on getting ready to throw themselves into the political sphere. The only advantage we can have now will not be financial advantage, mm -hmm. but intellectual advantage. Mm -hmm. So more young people should read. Mm -hmm. They should get themselves educated. 
And the education I'm talking about is not university education. I like university education, but university education doesn't really give you the information for, for, for today. So read books, read articles, there are free courses on the internet. Get yourself educated, read the newspapers, know what is going on. That would be our only advantage in 2019. Because between now and then, you can't amass enough money for the guys who are there already. But when you go for a debate, and you completely defeat someone who is 20 years your senior, you are shining him and you make him miserable before the people. You have won him. So that is what it is. Get yourself prepared, get the education, get the enlightenment, get the support from other young people. Mm -hmm. Let young adult people see that, okay, let us all work together. Let's pull in one direction. Okay. We, have, we have the number, we have the capacity. Let us support other young people who we feel that can, can make a difference and we'll get it. Thank you very much.